Hi, I'm Jared Hillam. Have you ever seen one of those movies where they zoom away from a detective board showing all the pictures, news articles, and notes connected by thumbtacks and yarn? Immediately, you can see the power of connecting the dots in all of those relationships. Imagine taking that detective board and applying a mathematical engine that could query its data relationships. Well, that is a graph database. I want to explain graph databases by starting with the familiar territory of a relational database. One of the main traits of a relational database is the constraining nature of its relationships, and that makes it ideal for processing transactions and building what I would call deterministic analytics. However, these strict constraints often make it too complex to answer questions about distant relationships. For example, imagine you had all the university professor and student data ever gathered. Then imagine you wanted to know the relationship between a group of 10 students originating from completely different universities. Well, at first glance, you'd think since the students didn't go to the same universities, you really don't have a connection. But if we look at their professors who all attended universities themselves, we can discover that they all shared a common professor when they were students. So now let's zoom in and describe some of the traits of a graph database. First, you have nodes, which are essentially records. Connected to these nodes is a type of relationship which can have a direction and a property associated to it. So in our case, the direction points from the original professor, the relationship type is student underscore of, and the property is the year and semester where they were taught. Now querying this database isn't like your typical SQL query. The graph database vendors often have their own query language, so that is something the industry is still working out. And that brings us to some of the drawbacks of graph databases. One fairly obvious drawback is the tendency to get a little conspiratorial. Just as at times the detective board on the movie screen can make somebody look crazy, graph databases can infer connections that really don't actually mean anything. For example, imagine the inference you could make if all the students in our previous example ended up dropping out of school. Does that mean that the original professor had some kind of meaningful impact on that bad outcome? Well, look, anything is possible, but we have to be a little more skeptical of such conspiratorial patterns. So graph databases are usually a mechanism for starting questions, but not necessarily answering them. Another issue is that it's not uncommon to send a graph database query into an oblivion, often because the query plan can be very difficult to conceptualize. This can lead to incorrect interpretations and slow running queries. That isn't to say that graph databases aren't fast. In fact, for the types of flexibility they offer, they are often the fastest method realistically available. But that speed is tuned to data attributes and not transactions which still remain the realm of relational data warehouses. So what we see is data science communities using graph databases to test inferences. The discovery of these relationships and their relevance to the organization often is what gets bubbled up into the data warehouse, thus closing the loop between the openness of data scientists and orderliness of data integration, like I discussed in one of my earlier videos. So graph databases are a component in a larger landscape of data management tooling. I've written a white paper about graph databases titled The Data Detective Board, which you can find in the video description. Additionally, if you're considering graph databases in your architecture, you can reach out to Intricity to talk with a specialist.